here's my Amazon salary. How much Amazon is paying me as a software engineering intern in Los Angeles, California. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Amon. I'm a student studying computer science. And in this video, I'm going to break down my complete Amazon journey from start to finish. I'm going to explain exactly how I got an Amazon software engineering internship for the summer of 2022 and specific actionable tips that you can use to also get an Amazon internship or really any other computer science job. Make sure you stick around till the end of the video because some of these tips may surprise you. I'm also going to reveal exactly how much Amazon is paying me. So if you're interested in that, watch till the end. But anyway, timestamps are in the description. Let's begin. All right. So I'll start off by answering the question, where was I before Amazon and why did I even apply to Amazon in the first place? Let's travel back in time to July, 2021, six months ago. I had just finished my second year of university and was right in the middle of my summer internship at John Deere. Now, by that point, I had already completed an internship the summer before and was working on my second CS internship. However, I was starting to think about plans for next summer and the year ahead of me. Basically, I was trying to decide whether I should graduate early and apply for full-time roles, or if I should stay in school and do a full four years with another summer internship. Ultimately, I decided on doing another internship next summer, mainly because it's much more straightforward to do an internship at a company and get a return offer than it is to get a new grad offer with no experience at that company. I also wanted to boost my resume some more. John Deere is a well-known company, and I liked working there, but I wanted to get another name on my resume. More specifically, I wanted a Fang company. Now, once I decided that I wanted to do an internship at a big tech company, the question was, which company should I apply for and how do I maximize my chances of getting an internship offer? Well, the first thing I did was research when each of the Fang companies, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google, released their summer internship applications. And it turned out, out of all of them, Amazon had opened up first. So I immediately applied literally the week it opened. This leads into my first tip. Apply as early as possible for every company you apply for and especially for Amazon. I ended up submitting my application on July 7th, almost a full year before the internship would start. If you compare this to other internship applications, it's crazy early. Most people find summer internships in October, November, or even December. However, most companies deal with their applications on a rolling basis. They aren't like college applications. My logic was the earlier you apply, the less competition you have, the more open seats there are, and the more likely you are to receive a response. Amazon is one of those companies that deals with rolling applications. And because I applied so early, I got a response just two weeks later. I know people who procrastinated applying for a few months and they only got responses four to five months later or no response at all. So yeah, tip number one, apply as early as possible and you'll maximize your chances for a reply. Before I get into advice about the online assessments, I wanna make some comments about why Amazon stuck out to me from all the other Fang companies. First of all, I did apply to 15 to 20 other companies. It's not like I only chose Amazon to put all of my bets on, but I had a suspicion that out of all of them, I'd have the greatest chance for Amazon. This is because Amazon is known to be somewhat loose with their OAs or their online applications. Let me explain. So the way software engineering jobs work is that they will always have you go through some sort of coding assessment or coding interview. CS jobs are unlike any other positions because they will literally make you take a test as part of the interview process. And because of this, they're actually one of the most egalitarian careers out there. See, once you get the test, it is completely in your hands. How likely you are to get the job is exactly how well you do on the coding interview. There's no confusion about it. If you want the job, just do well on the test. It's simple, and honestly, I find it kind of beautiful. CS jobs cut out all the politics and networking bullshit that exists in so many other careers. Now, because Amazon gives a lot of people that first test, I knew I had a good chance of getting the first OA. And therein lies the beauty of Amazon. Once I got that test, 99% of the luck was cut out of it. It was completely in my hands. I would get the job if I worked hard enough and did well in the exam. Other companies I applied to, like Microsoft, Google, and Apple, didn't even send me the first test. That's why I thought I had the best chance with Amazon. Okay, so now we fast forward two weeks to July 21st. I had just received the first OA, the first Amazon coding assessment. Basically, I had five days from that moment to take the first test. And that, my friends, is the instant where I decided to go all in to Amazon. The test was in my hands, and now all I had to do was do well on it. I'm going to break down that first assessment, how I prepared for it, and what kind of questions they asked. Okay, so this test was through Hackerank, a platform that facilitates coding interviews. It consisted of two lead code style questions, one easy and one medium. Lead code is another platform that has tons of coding questions and practice problems. It sorts the questions by topic and difficulty and even gives you a window to write your solution and grades it for you too. My next tip is to spend a shit ton of time practicing lead code. By this point, I spent a full few days just lead coding and practicing 
referencing the blind 75 list, which is a list of essential questions that gives you the meat of the content for coding interviews. Lead code also lets you sort by frequency. And if you have premium, filter by questions that have been asked on previous Amazon interviews. I literally started going down the list and working on as many as I possibly could. For each one, I'd code it as fast as possible and then deeply study the solution. I'd look at the optimal solution and try to really understand why it was better than mine. I'd literally take detailed notes on the time complexity, their overall technique, and any programming tricks or functions they used that I didn't know about. During those few days, I radically improved my coding ability. With every question I learned, I implemented something new. And because I focused on high frequency Amazon questions, I had literally done one of the questions on the interview beforehand. That's the power of studying leak code. Honestly, leak coding is something every CS major should be doing from the day you first learn to program. If you start early, it's just so helpful and makes a massive difference to your coding interview ability. A few days later, on July 26th, I received the Work Simulation and Work Styles Assessment, OA number two. So this online assessment is basically gauging your leadership and decision-making skills within a software engineering context. The first part, the Work Simulation, is this interactive program with videos of fake coworkers talking to you and asking you for advice related to problems. For example, one situation they might ask you to consider is whether following a deadline or delivering value is more important in the context of pleasing a customer. The specific story they lay out is something like this. You have a customer who's presenting an Amazon digital product in two weeks. However, one of the engineers on your team got COVID and is unable to work. Because of this, if you follow the original plan, you'll only be able to finish 75% of the product by the deadline of two weeks. Option one, complete as much as you can and only deliver 75%. You did your best after all. Option two, take an entire extra week to finish the project. Perfectionism is key. Option three, use the team budget to hire another software engineer or allocate another member from another team to help you out. Option four, communicate with the customer and find out how important following the deadline actually is, then make a decision. You can go ahead and pause the video and try to think about what you would choose if this showed up on the work simulation. Now, here are some tips and tricks that I would use if I were to approach this test again. First of all, worship the Amazon leadership principles. The Amazon leadership principles are these ideals that every Amazon employee lives by when making business decisions. You can just Google them and read them through. They're so important that in most internal meetings, Amazon engineers will literally mention them and use them to make decisions. The best way to prepare for soft interviews at Amazon is to deeply study these principles and try to actively think about them when answering questions. Let's go back to this example problem. One of Amazon's principles is frugality, so it's definitely not option three, hire another software engineer. Another tip for this OA is to usually choose the option that gives you more information, which is option number four in this case. If you do that, you'll have a better chance of choosing the right answer when you're forced to actually decide. Honestly, the best tip I can give you for this section is to actually take it seriously. A lot of CS majors make the mistake of seeing it as this unimportant woo-woo exam. They don't try it all and guess randomly, which is a huge mistake. I know people who didn't get the internship because they didn't try and fail this portion even though they got a perfect score on the other OA. Actually think through each question and really consider the Amazon leadership principles when choosing. Don't just guess. The next part of this OA is this personality test section, which takes around 20 minutes. Again, take it seriously and be honest. It is not trivial. There were actually questions like, do you ever lie? Like you might think you should write down never, but that's probably incorrect. The right answer would be sometimes because literally no one never lies. The goal of this question is probably gauging honesty. Tell the truth or at least don't lie. Okay, just to summarize my advice for this section, take it all seriously and actually try. Also study the Amazon leadership principles and maybe Google around and look for some practice questions. Let's fast forward a week to August 3rd when I got the invite to schedule the final interview. The email explained to me what the final interview was going to consist of and also gave me a range of dates within the next one to two weeks to choose a time. Amazon sends out their emails and cohorts, so I remember constantly monitoring r slash CS majors to see if anyone else received the final interview. The first mistake I made was feeling totally overjoyed when I saw this email. I remember as soon as I opened it, I felt so happy and was jumping and pacing around my room with the Avengers theme song playing in my head. I felt like a god. What I didn't consider was that the process wasn't over not by a long stretch. I had the hardest interview in front of me. By celebrating early, I kind of tricked myself into thinking the work was done when it really wasn't. I think I just didn't expect to get this far and I let it get to my head. Luckily, after a few days of stupid celebration, I came to my senses and made an action plan. This live Zoom interview consisted of two parts. First, I had to answer a few behavioral questions for 10 to 15 minutes. After that, I would have 30 minutes to complete a live coding problem in front of an Amazon
Amazon software engineer. I prepared for each part differently. For the behavioral portion, I watched a series of videos from Amazon on how they structure the questions, which led me to the STAR answering format. STAR stands for Situation, Task, Action, and Result. Whenever you answer an interview question, you should follow this rough format. I remember when learning this section, I literally pulled out a piece of scratch paper and wrote down STAR so I'd remember to follow this format always. Next, I refreshed my memory on the Amazon leadership principles because I knew I'd get bonus points for everyone I included in my answer. Finally, to make sure I had this rock solid, I looked up three to four Amazon questions that were pretty common on this section. Then I actually answered them live using the Amazon leadership principles and following the STAR format. I recorded myself doing this and I watched the videos back and took notes on how I could improve the process. I had around two example stories from my life that I could mold around and fit to any specific question. And by practicing in front of the camera, I nailed the delivery. I would really recommend doing this. Look up some practice questions and take a pen and paper out and outline a story of your life that could fit each of these questions. Then practice your delivery until you have it cold. This way you won't be blindsided by any question and you'll know exactly what to say. That's the behavioral portion. Things I did well were I followed the star format and I name dropped a bunch of Amazon leadership principles during my answer. I actually said stuff like I chose this option because I had a bias for action and I wanted to deliver results for my team. Another thing I did really well was I went super technical in the middle of my story. I talked about my last internship project and because I knew my audience was a software engineer, I was sure that he'd understand the detail. I think that helped me stand out because he did ask me some very specific CS questions that I was able to answer. Finally, someone who speaks English. So that's the behavioral portion. Next, we have the programming section. Honestly, I was terrified for this portion. I knew that if I got anything harder than the run of the mill leap code meeting, I'd be screwed. Here was my process. I got lead code premium so I could see common Amazon questions as well as other FANG questions. Then I chose the Amazon list, sorted by most frequent, and chose medium difficulty. I literally went down the list and did as many as I possibly could. For each one, I made sure I fully understood the optimal solution, and I even looked up alternative solutions from YouTubers like Neatcode to make sure I knew it in and out. Another thing that really helped was the process of whiteboarding and explaining my answers out loud. I knew I'd have to explain my solution as I was going to the interviewer. So I did a ton of lead code problems with a pen and paper in front of me acting like it was a whiteboard. Here's some whiteboarding tips I picked up while I was practicing. First of all, don't just start coding the solution. Spend at least two minutes really understanding the question. The worst thing you can do is misunderstand the question and jump in and code the wrong thing. The interviewer knows this. That's why they intentionally give you a really vague problem. They want you to get to the bottom of it before you write a single line of code. Ask a bunch of clarifications out loud, like what if the input is of the wrong type? Or what if they enter null into this function? Come up with as many edge cases as possible and write them down on the whiteboard. Often they'll say something like, you can assume that the input follows the correct format, but by asking a ton of questions, you really set yourself apart as someone who is not impulsive and takes their time to deeply understand the problem. Next, you should try to solve the brute force solution for the problem. I know what you're thinking, Amon, why the hell would I solve brute force first, even if I already know the optimal solution? But see, they're not testing whether you can get to the right answer. They're checking your thought process, how you reason to the correct solution. This is why you should always code out brute force first and then explain how you can improve it, which leads you to the optimal solution. This is also a great technique if you get lost and have no idea what you should do. I can't tell you the number of times where I had no clue what the optimal solution was, but then I coded brute force first and then it just came into my head. I love the phrase, if you can't do something smart, do something stupid. And in this context, it means coding brute force first. After coding brute force and writing your optimal solution, now this is important. Don't just lean back and say done like a complete dumbass. A lot of people do this. They'll just say done after writing out the solution and the interviewer knows this. What you should actually do is write a ton of test cases to check your code. Focus on the edge cases. Come up with as many as you can think of and write tests for all of them. Then step through your code using your tests. And more often than not, this will reveal glaring errors in your solution. And even if you had the perfect solution from the get-go, the process of testing and writing test cases is a huge part of software engineering and something they're looking for. Finally, as part of your conclusion, make sure to talk about time complexity and potential ways you can improve your code in the future. One more tip I learned from this process is that it's okay to ask questions during your interview. During my interview, I forgot how to index through a string in Python or something stupid like that. And I started to freak out until I was just like, hey, I forgot how to do this. And he was just like, lol, 
all, it's this. And it was fine. You could ask questions. They want you to do well. So how did I actually do on the interview? Well, mine was very different from what I expected. See, I was expecting a classic lead code medium, something like merge interval. That's what I prepared for. But I actually got a system design question, which completely blindsided me. I never expected that. The question was something like implement this additional feature on some Amazon product. Mine centered around designing a function related to Amazon reviews. However, even though I didn't expect this, all of the soft preparation I did really paid off. First of all, I spent a ton of time really understanding the question. There were genuinely things I didn't understand and he clarified for me. Afterwards, I proceeded to code it up. Honestly, I don't think my solution was anything special. I used the all-powerful hash map, wrote a pretty efficient solution, and then followed all the explanation steps. I have no choice but to use my secret weapon. Hash map. Also, I realized that luck does actually have a pretty big role to play in the question you get during the coding interview. If I'd gotten a lead code hard, I probably would have been f***ed. There's no way in hell I would have been able to do it. I actually got a hard for my Facebook interview, that's another story, but it completely destroyed me. Luckily, I got a systems question from my Amazon interview, and since I was good at the soft explanation, it allowed me to work through it pretty well. That's my entire Amazon application process with all the tips and tricks I used. Okay, the moment you've all been waiting for. My offer package, where I'm located, and how much Amazon is paying me. So I picked Los Angeles, California as my ideal location, and because I applied so early, I actually got my top choice. Specifically, I'll be in Culver City, California, starting around June 15, 2022, so if you're there over the summer, hit me up. But anyway, here's my Amazon salary, how much Amazon is paying me as a software engineering intern in Los Angeles, California. So my salary is around $9,138 per month, which comes to around $57 per hour. It also has a housing stipend and some relocation benefits, but I don't know what those are yet. I'll find out in a few months. So yeah, that's my entire Amazon journey. If you like this video, you can watch this video right here where I talk about my computer science goals for the new year, what I actually want to accomplish at Amazon. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, make sure to comment them down below and I will see you in the next video.